Okay, can everyone see that? Yes, we can, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, let me go to slideshow. Okay, there we go. So um, I am so excited about this opportunity that JSOSW is participating in. I'm also so happy to see many of our uh, senior class students participating um, in the Samaj meeting today to understand more about this award. So I am really impressed that you all decided to join today to understand more about this award. Uh, this is really an exciting award. Um, this is the Presidential Volunteer Service Award. This is awarded by the current sitting president of the United States. Um, so, uh, Mittal Ben, uh, I don't yes. know about other people, but for me, your voice kind of goes in and out. If you can oh, be close really? to the microphone. Yeah. Okay, let me let me try something. Is this better or no? Um, no? Yes? No, not as much. Not for me. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, that's much better if they're closer. Okay, how about now? Oh, yeah, much better. Okay, I had to just plug in my microphone. Okay, um, as I was saying, so this Presidential Volunteer Service Award is an award uh, given out or awarded by the current sitting president of the United States. Um, this is a way to honor and celebrate students and young adults who are performing selfless community service, uh, which is one of the pillars of Jainism. So I'm so excited that we're able to now participate in this award. So let's go to the next slide. So what is the uh, Presidential Volunteer Service Award? I'll just say PVSA from now on. Uh, as I said, it's uh, given out by the President of the United States. An important thing to remember here is that it's given um, to American citizens and uh, Bob and Bai, I know you've also done so much research uh, on this award and helped us to become an entity which can award students. So if you have anything to add at any time, just please interrupt and, and okay. I'm not missing anything. Sure. Um, but you do have to be an American citizen to um, participate and- uh, it's, it's American citizen or green card holders. Okay, yes. Um, and the award is given to students who have earned a certain amount of hours over a 12 month period. So for our organization, uh, the period started uh, from February 1st, and then it will be through January 31st of the next year, giving us some time to make sure that we collect everything and have it organized before we submit it. Okay, what age can you participate? So it, if you go to their website, uh, there's a variety of ages that can participate, but ha after having a discussion with our executive committee, this is what we have determined is appropriate for us, okay? So in order to be able to earn hours and earn this award, uh, these are the groups, the age groups, um, and I'm really hoping that everyone will try to earn 100 plus hours uh, for our current calendar year. We're going to have lots of opportunities available on how to earn these awards. The important thing here is if you look on the slide, it says if your age changes during the participation year, then at the, then whatever age you are at the start of the year is what we will continue to record your hours for. So if you're 12 in uh, February when it starts, and then you turn 13 in September, or I'm sorry, I should say if you're 15 and then you turn 16, do you have to now earn, uh, you know, double the hours? No, we'll stay with what age you were when we first started the award or when you first started your um, earnings. Okay, so we're really hoping that we can build a community by doing this award. We really want to foster more participation in our JSOSW activities by our youth. You know, they're the future Jane leaders of our community and hopefully globally. And we really want to have a way to build community, to build unity, to build strength um, and help showcase their innovative, creative and leadership skills. So this is one of the reasons why we wanted to offer this to our students. Okay, so what activities are acceptable? Okay, so once in-person meetings are allowed, there'll be a variety of activities. Um, right now, since we're still meeting virtually, we don't have those options, but things such as setting up and breaking down for our events, helping to clean up, 
food serving, um, our uh, senior, our very senior class members can help with planning programs, MC the events, come up with ideas for ways to um, make our community stronger um, for when we're in person. Virtual things, um, one way that you can earn hours is by doing virtual presentations. Unfortunately, the PVSA is very strict about virtual presentations that are about religious topics. Um, and if you are, let's say, volunteering and helping out in one of our intermediate or junior classes, uh, that cannot count towards this award. Um, any kind of religious teachings or et cetera, um, it's not eligible for this. But you could do a virtual presentation. You know, let's say you wanted to do um, a presentation about, you know, uh, how seniors can use technology better, or let's say you wanted to do, um, you know, a virtual presentation about, you know, some type of uh, drive, you know, collecting coats or recycle drive or something like that. Um, you'd have to talk it over with one of us, make sure it's an appropriate topic for the presentation, and then you can earn a certain amount of hours for that. Um, then we have lots of botchella service activities going on. We currently had a card making activity that you could have earned some hours for, uh, outdoor cleanups, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So these are some ways that you can earn some awards. Um, here are some other ideas for in person. Some of these are taken from other centers, uh, specifically uh, JCNC, which is already hosting this program and it has been a huge success for them. And here are some other things that I had mentioned um, previously that we could do, okay? And we're open to it. I know, you know, our students are so creative on, 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 on how, on things they can present that will be useful for us. Um, okay, what, what about if you do an activity that's not sponsored by the JSOSW? Can that be considered, uh, can those hours be considered um, for this award? Yes, they can, but they can't be the only way that you are achieving this award. There can be a small portion of what you're doing or a small portion of your hours. Um, so volunteering at another nonprofit organization, tutoring, you know, volunteering at a hospital, et cetera, et cetera. What, what is not acceptable? So these are the things that are not acceptable. Donations of any kind are not acceptable. Assisting in any type of, you know, worship or religious teaching activity is not acceptable. And then of course the obvious, you know, babysitting your brother or sister or cleaning your room. <laughs> um, the other thing is, you know, activities should align with our Jane values. So let's say you're volunteering at an event where they're serving alcohol or serving meat and you're volunteering there because you're part of a different nonprofit organization. You really have to consider whether that is aligning with our Jane values and whether those hours are going to count towards this or not. Um, so that is uh, something I wanted to share. And uh, as of right now, I, I'm doing the day-to-day -day operations. If anyone is interested in helping me, I'd love to have some more support and help. Always uh, open and welcome to that. Um, a couple other things um, I wanted to let everybody know is uh, we're going to have some documents prepared. We're working to prepare them now. So um, everyone will be responsible for keeping track of their hours. We will be also be keep, keeping track. Um, hours will need to be submitted uh, or your activity will need to be sub submitted for pre-approval. Um, you don't want to go out and do some activity expecting that it'll be counting towards this. And then it ends up not counting. So one, make sure you uh, track all your hours using the paperwork and documentation that we have, which we will be uh, sending out soon and hopefully eventually uh, having a link on our website. Um, number two, um, all of those forms should be submitted prior to your activity so we can make sure uh, that it's an eligible activity uh, for this award. Okay. Okay. What, any questions or bothered by anything that I missed you'd like to add? Hey, Mito. Yeah. And, and this is great. I'm, I mean, I'm really happy you're doing this. Uh, just one piece of feedback. I think as you guys are structuring this, you should think about having some kind of bar because if somebody just does a hundred hours of something simple, you know, and you know, it, it, the goal should be to set a bar where our, you know, our kids are learning about, you know, truly giving back to the community and volunteering and helping. So 
maybe think about doing something where 25 of the hours have to be, you know, volunteering in the community or volunteering outside of doing stuff for our own community, but helping the homeless and doing things like that. Uh, because otherwise, I worry that, you know, people are going to make this a resume building activity. And what is the easiest way to get 100 hours so they can put it on their resume? And that's what parents will focus on, too, versus actually what we're trying to get, you're trying to get out of this is to truly teach our kids about the importance of helping and volunteering and helping those that are less fortunate. Yeah, that's a great, great point. And, uh, you know, we, we did talk about that um, uh, when we met as a committee. And that's why we're really requesting and actually requiring that any activity you do must first be approved by myself and the executive committee um, before and to determine your candidacy and the eligibility of that activity to count towards these hours. So we tried to build that in um, to help prevent that from happening. But that's a great point. And thank you for bringing that up today. Yeah, and uh, Sanjay, uh, I talked with the person who runs uh, this uh, PVSA at JCNC. And uh, when he started the program, he only had five kids uh, joining uh, the PBSA program. This was uh, about eight, eight, 10 years ago. Now they have almost 30 kids and many more in the wait list. And they are uh, contributing more than 3,000 plus hours in every year towards uh, the uh, PBSA. And they are doing a lot of great work uh, both at JCNC's temple as well as uh, a lot uh, other nonprofits in the area. So they do collaborate with uh, the homeless shelters. They do collaborate uh, with uh, the Rotary Club uh, in uh, California. So they do a lot of activities. And, and the thing is, uh, it, they have received a lot of positive feedback. As you just mentioned, they received a lot of positive feedback from the parents as well, because a lot of the activities, the way they do it, is they try to gear it in such a way that the parents also have to get involved uh, to a certain extent. They cannot just sit on the sidelines. So the parents also have to take responsibility. The other thing that they have created is in terms of guidelines is, is that the volunteers, they have to uh, uh, follow a rule of integrity. So for example, let's say uh, there is an event going on and they, they signed up for three hours of volunteering when they come to the event, they only help for maybe say half an hour and the rest of the time they are chit-chatting with other people. Well, then they only get uh, 30 minutes uh, towards uh, their total hours. They're not going to get credit for the whole three hours. So that's why as uh, Mittal Ben said, there is going to be an oversight from the executive committee as well to make sure that uh, the activities are pre-approved and there is a, uh, a sense of ownership uh, for the volunteers that they are responsible for their own actions. Yeah, that's it. No, that's good. I think it's just mainly making sure that we advocate and push for our kids to help outside of our own community to others, right? That's truly, I mean, yeah. I think that's an important aspect of whether it's going and feeding the homeless, whether it's going to doing something that isn't just within the Jane community. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that that's that's our intent and that's our motivation for this and we hope, you know, uh, all, all we can do is hope that others, you know, follow um, and, you know, have pure intentions. And, and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, Bob and by, there are some questions in the chat that I wanted to yep. answer about this yeah, award. If that's okay. Uh, yep. One of the questions was, how many people get this award? Well, if you want to get this award, the first thing you have to do is, uh, one, um, you have to fill out the documentation. Uh, two, submit your paperwork to see if the activities you're doing are eligible or not. Um, and then if you have met the hours that are, are required, then you could earn this award depending on what age group you fall into. So the answer is how many people get this award? Anybody who's participating uh, and meets the criteria can participate and earn this award. Um, then it says, do also do all activities have to be through the Jane Samaj? No, they don't. Like we talked about in our slide, you can do some activities that are not sponsored by the JSOSW, but all activities have to be pre-approved. Okay. Uh, then the next question is, would being a local representative for YJA count towards volunteering hours? I think it really depends on what you're doing and um, what, what is the uh, type of work you're doing. So I definitely think... Um, 
uh, would advise you to fill out that paperwork to see if what you're doing is eligible. You know, all of these things are looked uh, looked at by me and then also Bob and by and, and, and other members of the executive committee before they're approved. Um, where can I get the paperwork? Very soon. Today is just our informative session to inform everyone what we're doing. We're working on developing the paperwork. This is um, a process. And uh, one other thing is, you know, the JSOSW also, you know, we have to be flexible because right now we're meeting virtually. Once we start meeting in person, you know, we may have to slightly, you know, change and our guidelines may evolve. And as this group grows organically, we may have different needs and different requirements. So um, just stay tuned. We'll definitely put a message in the WhatsApp of uh, the JSOSW chat once the uh, documents are available. Okay, next question. Um, if I already have hours from February 1st, can I use those? Yes, you can if they're they're eligible. Yes. Uh, one thing I would like to add is if uh, any volunteers are volunteering for activities outside of JSOSW, for let's say they are volunteering for a local uh, youth shelter, uh, but and if if uh, the members of the executive committee or Mittal Ben are not present to oversee what you are doing, then as she said, the activity has to be pre-approved. That's one thing. But second, we would need a return documentation from that local nonprofit saying how many hours did you volunteer and what activity did you do then this is very important in case if we get audited we want to make sure there is a paper trail of all the works uh, all the hours that you volunteered for uh, in the event that we do get audited so as a volunteer it will be up to you and your responsibility to make sure that if you volunteer for a nonprofit that is um, not JSOSW, that you make sure that uh, you document the hours thoroughly and make sure they are authorized and approved by uh, the Mittalben and get a written documentation uh, from the nonprofit that you volunteered for. Uh, yeah, that's a really great point. Thank you for bringing that up. We did not mention that. And, you know, this is a, this is a pretty strictly monitored um, program. So it's not kind of just willy-nilly and people just get the award and no, it's really a privilege uh, to be selected and approved to participate in this award. Um, and so we want to do uh, what's right and follow the rules and, um, you know, really make sure you're doing this with the right intent and right motivations, which is our goal. So, um, and we'll have, so, we'll, we'll, like I said, once the documents come out, it'll become a little bit more clear um, on what you need to do. And, and to encourage uh, for the young audience who is listening on the call, uh, JCNC, who is running this program, they have uh, alumni from this particular PVSA program who has been able to put their volunteer service and the award on their resume, and they have been able to get admissions to various, uh, various reputed in universities like Caltech, uh, University of California in Berkeley, uh, so they, so this definitely helps you boost your resume as well. But again, we want to make sure that uh, we do this with the right way. And, uh, and I encourage each and everyone to step up and uh, join this uh, program uh, as long as you are eligible to meet the criteria. Uh, there's something I'd like to add real quick for the local representative question. Um, I know that there's like a, a lot of gray area between that, uh, like on that particular position. So um, feel free to just have them like reach out to us and we can figure out like a good way to go about all of the different responsibilities and figure out where actually all the things like actually split. Um, yeah, and I think it'd be a great way also like in the future to kind of pull local representatives into our Samaj a little bit more closely. <laughs> Okay, Mithalvin, do you want to add anything else? Do we have any other questions? Uh, uh, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, I don't really have any of, anything else to add unless anyone wants any more clarification or anything like that. Uh, and you can always reach out to us uh, if you don't feel comfortable asking here. Definitely reach out to us uh, over WhatsApp or email or et cetera. Thank you. Yep. All right, so I see that we are almost out of time. Um, Ajit, uh, how much time do you need? You, do you need 10 minutes to cover or can 